What is up, YouTube? My name is Clickwood, and I am back again with another episode of my budget series here on Madden 15 Ultimate Team. And guys, this is the series where we go in and we take a look at some of the most underpriced cards in the game, and we compare them to some of the most overpriced cards in the game. Sometimes you actually see situations where the underpriced cards are even better than the overpriced cards. But today, guys, what we're going to be focused on is the halfback position, also known as running back. Technically speaking, it really depends on where they line up in the backfield, but for the purposes of this video, I'll probably be mostly referring to them as running backs. Uh, in Madden Ultimate Team, though, they are referred to as halfbacks as far as the position goes. So I hope that makes sense to you guys. And uh, just to let you know, too, I wanted to do a couple different options for you guys at the running back position today. And the reason for it is because I think it really depends on the style of player that you are with your running game. Now, I know there are a lot of people that traditionally run to the outside and they look for the big gains by running to the outside. Uh, and then there are going to be people that pass to their running backs, of course, and need the shiftier guys. And then there are just going to be people that really just like to grind the ball up the middle and I think that a lot of that comes from the fact that 0-1 trap and, and all the trap plays in this game in general are really overpowered this year so in order to do those type of runs we need a different type of running back so I'm going to give you guys three different options today we're going to compare them like I said an underpriced card to an overpriced card and uh, we'll try and decide you know which one's better first of all and then secondly uh, which one is better for the price because that's really what is important to us especially if you don't have a million coins like many of us do not at this point in the game. So let's hop right into it and we're going to start off looking at what I call basically your overall running back. So this is a guy who is not necessarily amazing at being either a super fast player or a, a super strong runner, but they're really just kind of your overall do-it-all kind of a running back. And the guys that we're going to be comparing today are on the left-hand side of your screen, you have Emmett Smith, 94 overall elite legend. And then on the right-hand side, you have a gold 84 overall Joe McKnight, and that is a football outsiders card from a few weeks back. And guys, the reason that I chose these two is because I think that they're very, very comparable. Now, I'm not going to come out here and tell you that I necessarily believe that the Emmett Smith isn't better than the Joe McKnight. I think that it is. Um, but the, the thing is, though, is that there are a lot of areas where the Joe McKnight is actually better. And in the areas where he's not as good, I don't think it's really that significant. So, like, for example, the first thing that we're looking at here, on the left-hand side, you've got Emmett Smith at 92 speed, 93 acceleration. So, decent speed. But if you look at Joe McKnight, 93 speed, 95 acceleration, and then he also has 94 agility. The elusiveness is also in Joe McKnight's favor because he has 94 versus 90 for Emmett Smith. And then he does also have a better juke move at 93 versus 92. Now, where the Emmett Smith is actually better is that he has 96 carrying. So that card is basically not going to fumble. And that's, of course, something that you cannot overlook. It is very, very important this year, uh, especially considering there are a lot of cards out there that fumble a ton. So the Emmett Smith is definitely one that does not fumble very often. The other thing, his trucking, 94 versus Joe McKnight, 66. That is the major difference between these two. Um, Emmett Smith can run people over. I'm not going to tell you that he can't. And, and just to let you guys know, too, I'm a little bit biased. Emmett Smith, my favorite football player of all time. So I absolutely love Emmett Smith. I wanted this card the second that it came out. But for the price, 325,000 coins on average for Emmett Smith right now. Whereas you compare it to Joe McKnight, which, like I said, in a lot of areas is better than Emmett Smith, 6,000 coins. And that card is actually probably going to continue to lower and lower and lower in price over the next couple of weeks as it continues to become less important for sets. Uh, people are not going to want to do the sets from weeks and weeks back. So that's why I think that Joe McKnight is going to be a great value over the next couple of weeks here. And uh, we'll be able to, you know, see him drop a little bit in price. And then by that time, he might be down to 5,000, 4,000 coins and just make him that much more valuable. So... Hopefully that answers that question for an overall running back for you guys. And then I wanted to move on now to talk about a, a position uh, that is a little bit more toward what I like to do with my running backs. And that is get a speedy, speedy player. Now, first thing that you're going to see on the screen, a lot of red on the right hand side of the screen. CJ Spiller, gold 79 overall versus Jamal Charles, 89 overall elite. 
Again, I am not going to tell you that CJ Spiller is better than Jamal Charles. The only thing that he is technically better in is agility by one. So it's not that important. Uh, and But the big thing here is that I think we need to look at the areas that he's not quite as good in because they're really, really close to one another in just about everything. But uh, CJ Spiller is only lower by one in speed, acceleration, uh, juke move, and catching. So he's almost identical to him in five categories, and then he's better in one category. Now, the areas where he is significantly lower, he does only have 76 carrying. So you are going to have to be careful with this card not getting popped, running it up the middle, and getting smacked by Patrick Willis, or, you know, going over the, the middle and uh, trying to catch a pass or something, and uh, taking your first step, and then all of a sudden, boom, you have Cam Chancellor hitting you in the face. Got to be careful with this card because he is going to fumble more than your Jamal Charles will. But I don't really think that... Uh, my, my personal opinion is that I don't really think that you have to worry about that so much. Because you're at the point right now when you've got 2,500 coins, which is what the CJ Spiller goes for. Where you're not going to find very many great players that are, you know, they're, that are good at everything. So there's going to be an area that all of these cards are not spectacular in. And for it to be carrying, okay, so maybe he fumbles once every game. Or maybe once every two games. Or maybe once every three games, depending on how you use him. And how smart you are with taking angles. And, uh, you know, going out of bounds when you need to. And, you know, just not fighting necessarily for extra yardage after you get hit. That is the kind of thing that you can do to prevent uh, fumbling. Now, if he was slow and he had poor elusiveness and he had no moves or anything like that, like a lot of the other cards are that are 79 overall, pretty much useless. But I personally think that CJ Spiller is very, very useful. I really like this card. I think that it's very, very valuable for 2,500 coins. And when you compare it to the Jamal Charles, like I said, which is going for 180,000, I don't think that there's 160 or 100 and what is it 77,500 coins of difference between these two. I really, really don't. I think it's a lot, a lot, a lot closer than that. And uh, that's my personal opinion. That's why I would say if you're looking for a budget speedy running back, CJ Spiller's probably your guy. Moving on to the third and final style of running back, and we have the power running back. So. These guys are the guys that you want to run right up the middle and just smash and smash and smash. Run those 0-1 traps, run those dives and, and those power runs. These are your guys for doing that on your offense. And the guys that we're looking at here on the left-hand side of your screen, we do have Peyton Hillis, the flashback elite, 90 overall. And he's going for 135,000 coins. And we're going to be comparing him to Eddie Lacy, who is 83 overall, a gold card. And he's going for only 5,500 coins. So a huge difference here, about 130,000 coins in difference. But I'm going to tell you guys, I think you could make a serious case that Eddie Lacy is flat out better than Peyton Hillis. Now, hear me out here. Personal opinion. I think that 96 trucking is exceptional you're not going to need better than that so if you're going out there and looking for somebody that has better than that down the road or whatever fine whatever but 96 to me is going to be about all that i really care about i mean that's totally fine i'm not really going to be looking for somebody better in that area but the thing that i really want my guys to do that i care that carry the ball up the middle is i need them to not fumble and i need them to hit the hole and and then maybe be elusive after that fact because they're you know when you're when you're going up against the linebackers you're typically not going to want to truck those guys as much as you want to truck the safeties and the cornerbacks on defense so my opinion is that if you can make the first guy miss with a move of some sort, like a spin move or uh, a juke move or, you know, just being like relatively faster than the other guy, then you can get to that second level and you can start to hit, uh, or excuse me, you can get to the third level and you can start to hit those safeties and lower your shoulder and get the big, big gains. That's what I would do with my guys. Now, again, you can make the case, of course, that Peyton Hillis is better because he does have slightly higher acceleration. He's only a slight bit slower. But my personal opinion, the only real thing where I see a significant difference between these two players is that Peyton Hillis is a better catcher out of the backfield. The other thing that is in, in Eddie Lacy's favor is that he has better elusiveness, better agility, 
way better spin move and a pretty significantly better juke move. So he's a lot more elusive uh, to be able to, to beat those linebackers or, you know, in the case of in, in some situations, even a standard defensive lineman uh, at the point of attack. And then he can get down and run over your cornerbacks and your safeties with that 94 or your 96 trucking with the 94 carrying. So again, it all depends on what your price point is that you're at. If you've got 130,000 coins or 135,000 coins to afford Peyton Hillis, and you really want Peyton Hillis, you really want a 90 overall running back, great. By all means, afford your Peyton Hillis. But to me, 5,500 coins, I'm getting basically the same card and I'm getting upgrades in some areas. So that's why I think Eddie Lacy is extremely undervalued. He is my guy for your ground and pound running style. So guys, I hope you appreciated today's video. I did take some time in it and uh, really examine a ton of different cards because I really love the running back position. It's my favorite overall position in football. I think that I have some gems here for you guys. So if you enjoyed today's video, make sure you press that like button below. Also leave a comment. Let me know if there are other guys that you think are quality players to go into the budget series, whether it be at running back or any other position, I would greatly appreciate it. I'm sure other people would as well. And if you're new to the channel, of course, make sure you press that subscribe button so that you're aware when I drop my new videos. Thank you guys so much. Do appreciate it. And I will talk to you beautiful bitches again soon.